Hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Janko Torres, who is over in Atlanta, Georgia. How are you doing, Janko? Super good. How about yourself, John? I'm doing fantastic. And, and, and Janko has been an entrepreneur for four years, helping people maintain their immune system with an important nutrient called Immunocal. And this product, apparently, it helped your, your, it helped your mom get out of bed, which is why you became so passionate about it. And so what we wanted to talk about is, okay, so four years ago or so, uh, Janko, you were 19, broke, just doing, doing your thing. And fast forward, you're now a successful entrepreneur. But to talk us through, what happened uh, four years ago and how did you end up uh, as an immune health advocate? Fantastic. Well, first of all, John, it's, you know, I'm really, really happy to be here, you know, to really share this message and, you know, um, and help a lot of people, which is what I love to do. So it's very interesting because I had always been a big thinker and I always had the desire to be an entrepreneur, um, but I had never known the vehicle. What type of product should I sell? What type of service should I help people with? And by a bad situation, something good came out of it. So my mother from being a super active entrepreneur, super active in volunteer work from literally little by little, not feeling well and going like, you know, what I remember is from that, from, you know what? I can't even get up and get out of bed. Like oh, wow. that was kind of the situation. And that really affected our whole family. Cause we were like, okay, what happened to mom? And like, why is she like this? And we kind of got obsessed in, okay, let's, what's happening with her and she went to the doctor doctor couldn't find what she had we went to natural doctors no no response mm -hmm. and one day we're eating at someone's house actually this was in 2016 and someone tells us about immunocal and says hey look there's right. this fantastic product from canada it does this and that but you know john like most people you're just kind sure. of skeptical you know you, you know you're kind of like oh you're like i've tried everything you know i don't mm -hmm. have to try this yeah, now yeah, yeah. but what we did know is one thing is to doubt, absolutely, which is super normal. It's actually healthy. But one thing is to not investigate. So we said, you know mm -hmm. what? We don't want to be that person that doesn't investigate. So we investigated. We liked what we saw. We got it for her. And, and we were in a horrible financial situation. And I remember a week passes by. It's a true story. I wake up a Sunday morning. And this was when we used to live in Florida, in Jacksonville. And I see her cleaning the kitchen. I see her organizing the kitchen. Wow. And 10 minutes later, she's like, hey, you know, I want to go walk at the beach. So yeah. two years in bed and one week like this, I said, okay, something clearly is different about this product. And that's when I kind of got obsessed on this. I said, okay, what does this product do? And I remember asking her, hey, can I, can I consume this? She says, yeah, it's, you know, it's also for, for immune maintenance. And I said, okay, so... Me, my dad, my brother, my great grandparents, my grandparents, my uncles, aunts. I mean, everybody literally in our circle of influence mm -hmm. started consuming this product because of her testimonials. So I became right. a raving fan customer. That was it. Mm -hmm. And a couple months later, they tell me, they say, hey, look, there's, there's an entrepreneur opportunity behind this. I think you should check it out. And I was always entrepreneur. I probably had 50 sure. bucks in my name, John. And I said, you know what? Let's go. I'm hungry and I'm coachable for sure. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I went to the seminar, loved what I saw saw the science, saw everything. And I remember I made the decision to become an entrepreneur of this company. So that, that's how I started hungry and looking and well, that's, and now we're here. Well, that's an amazing story and, and it's all good. Your mom continues to do well. Yep. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's very good now. That's fantastic. It's a couple of things you mentioned there that I just wanted to hone in on. And that is uh, for anybody considering going into something like this or, or considering, you know, being an entrepreneur or just successful in general. You mentioned two things. Number one was the hunger, right? Because let's face it, it's not going to be an easy ride to begin with, regardless. So very few people are overnight successes, right? You have to work at it. And the other thing is coachability. You're coachable because I think that's where a lot of people fall down is that, you know, they may have the hunger and the desire but they're not open to the coaching part. Yep. So yep. what was that when you went in? What um, Number one, how did you know you were coachable <laughs> to begin with? And second off, um, what were some of the lessons that you learned early on that really helped you? Great. So 
I knew I was coachable because, you know, before being an entrepreneur, whenever I had a job, I was always, you know, like looking for the coach for that mm -hmm. person to help me. You know, my, 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 my family and I, we had always worked really in uh, volunteer work. I have been dedicating 70 hours of volunteer work since I'm young. So looking for mentors on how to speak better, how to, you know, be better in communication was kind of in me because that's how I was trained, right? And, and I noticed that whenever I tried to do it by myself when I was younger, things didn't work out. But whenever I found a mentor, you know, I had success. So mm -hmm. clearly as an entrepreneur, there, there are entrepreneurs that have failed for sure. But there are also lots of entrepreneurs that have succeeded. So mm -hmm. when I found this out, I quickly found a mentor for that person to coach me. His name is Jim Spencer. He's a great friend of mine. And he is a very successful entrepreneur. And I, I remember I asked him, I said, hey, can, can I do this business with you? He said, you run with me, I run with you. And I said, let's do this. So definitely going back and my volunteer work really has really helped me saw that, hey, you know what, being coachable was better. Yeah. No, and I think that's a great takeaway for people listening is that coachability is so important. And it doesn't matter what stage of your career, what you're doing. It's always good to be open to coaching because let's face it, your coaches and mentors can see things often that you can't see. And we all have our blind spots. Oh, um, true. Yeah. So, so when you first got into this, what were some of the lessons that you personally learned early on about maybe some of the things that you start that you started off doing that you stopped doing some other things that you started doing? What were some of the early lessons you learned? Yeah. So uh, first of all, I noticed that to be a good entrepreneur, you have to educate yourself, right? So I'm, I'm a big believer, John, that it's 80% mindset and 20% mm -hmm. mechanic. That might sound cliche for a lot of people, but that's so accurate. Like I, got obsessed with learning skills, like how to be a good entrepreneur, how to think like an entrepreneur, how to, you know, not, you know, read two, three books, you know, two, three chapters per day, listen to podcasts. Like I got obsessed with this because I really wanted to learn. Okay. So definitely educating yourself and educating your mindset, because this is what I've noticed, John. Most people that become entrepreneurs have a scarcity mindset. They think that mm. there's not enough people to talk to about their product, service, business. They think that there's not enough money. They have, you know, a, you know, like, oh, you know, they did it, but I can't do it type mentality. So I noticed that I had this scarcity mentality and I really wanted to get out of it. Once I started to think in a more abundant way, mm. right? Hey, you know, there's business for everybody. There's products for everybody, right? There's customers for everybody. There's money for everybody. Everything started to change because then I didn't now start to hunt people, you know, when it came to my product. Now I started to form relationships. I started to treat them as human beings. Why? Because I started to change my mindset. You know, this scarcity, right. I, I had to, I had to get rid of it. I had to start thinking more abundantly. So definitely sticking to personal development and working on my mindset got and helped me develop um, an abundant mentality. And I think that most people that want to become an entrepreneur have to work with their mindset first. Yeah, no, I couldn't, I couldn't agree more. And I think the abundant mindset is critical because then you see a world of opportunity. If you have a scarcity or a finite mindset, then you see everything as as just a doggy dog competition. And if, if Janko gets some piece of business, that's a piece of business that he's taken away from me. Instead of saying, good on Janko, that means there's a lot more business out there. Yep. So true. That really is the mentality that we should all strive for as an entrepreneur. Yeah, absolutely. So tell me just a little bit more. Okay. So the, the whole healthcare industry, mind and body industry, the supplement and all of that, I mean, it's, it's a booming industry right now. So how do you, how do you differentiate what you're doing and how do you make people, as you said, more comfortable that this isn't just another kind of like alternative fad or just a, or just something, uh, just a new thing that they're going to replace in a couple of weeks with something else. Yeah. So you know, it's uh, it's interesting because there's a book called uh, Glutathione, your key to health, and that's kind of where I help people with. And I'll explain that in a second. Um, and Dr. Jimmy Gutman, who's also one of my mentors when it comes to nutrition, he talks about that. And one of the main reason that, sorry, the the main thing that makes us different 
from most nutrition products and supplements is, you know, whenever you're buying a home, a real estate agent always says that it's all about location, location, location. Mm -hmm. So with us, it's science, science, science. So one thing is a story, right? A story of someone that had a good result with a product like my mother. And stories are important, right? Because humans were emotional and we have to listen to these stories to get proof. But nowadays, especially with the internet and social media, it's so easy for people to Google your product. It's so easy for people to investigate about your product. 40 years ago, probably not. But now it's very important. So the difference is, okay, what kind of info, medical info and scientific info does this product have in which I can trust? That's where we win. Okay. So my product, Immunocal and Immunocal Platinum, has over 42 years of research. That's not common for a natural product. Okay. It's in the doctor's book, the PDR. And it's also in the CPS, which is Canada's doctor book, also not common for a natural product. Has over 72 clinical studies. Some drugs don't even have 30 studies. And it has over 80 patents. So once people see this documentation and see this info, they say, well, you know what? This isn't just a matter of stories anymore. There's the info that proves that what Giancarlo is telling me is true, that, hey, if you consume this product, though I can't promise anything, I can promise one thing. It will maintain your immune system. And this is based on not only stories, but on scientific and medical info. Yeah. And you refer to this here as, as complementary medicine as opposed to alternative medicine. Can you explain that? Because I think a, a lot of people immediately like lump everything in as alternative medicine if it's not something that's like directly prescribed by their doctor. Yes. So alternative medicine really means that, you know, forget conventional medicine, just use this. And I'm against that. I'm against that because we all need conventional medicine. It's necessary. So this is where the word complementary comes. Okay. My product and this product, the immunocale is not supposed to replace medicine. It's not supposed to replace someone's doctor. It, this is really a complement to any medical treatment. So this is another thing that makes us different. You know, like we're not the typical, Hey, forget your doctor, forget your drugs, mm -hmm. consume this. No, no, no. I, I always tell people, look, not me, no, no, anybody should tell you, hey, stop consuming that treatment. That, that's your doctor and that's yourself. This product will complement. So why complementary medicine? Because complementary supplements and medicine help medical treatments work even better. So if someone is on, let's say, 10 drugs prescribed mm -hmm. by their doctor, they listen about my product. I explain to them how it works. Now they're not scared. Now they just add the product to their daily diet, right? And now they will see better results. And now what does the doctor say? Well, what, what's happened? You, you know, things are better. And the person can confidently say, hey, you know what? This product that's in your book, someone recommended to me, I read it and it's helping me feel better. Most cases, John, you know, good 95% doctors will be happy. They right. won't be mad because they'll see, you know what? You know, the patient didn't stop consuming the drugs or the treatments. They just added something with education. So this is why I'm such a big uh, fan on really talking about complementary medicine because I don't exclude anybody, right? right? So especially I don't exclude doctors in which I don't want to do ever. Yeah, no, no, that makes total sense. And I think it makes sense for people to complement anyway what their what their doctors or whatever are saying because you know we can always uh, you know we can always use help. Um, here, here's one other interesting thing here is you just mentioned about the internet. Yeah. And it's great that you can, you know, you can get your product out there. You can get the information out there and all of that. But one of the, one of the kind of downsides of, of that too, is there's a lot of conflicting information that comes up on the internet. Cause you know, and we've all been in that situation where you get excited about something and you say, okay, I'm going to get this. I read up on it. It looks fantastic. And then you suddenly come across some site that has a review that isn't isn't um, complimentary or something like that. And then you're kind of back at square one. You're like, even though you have an abundance of evidence that it seems OK, you've just got this niggling little doubt over here that sometimes results in you not doing anything. How, how do you combat that? Yeah. So word of mouth really is extremely powerful, right? Mm -hmm. So if you tell me about something, John, um, I'll believe you because we're friends, okay? Personally, I won't be bothered by review in Google, even if it's a horrible review because I trust you. So, of course, 
not everybody will be convinced even by the best education ever. You know, like I understand that hundred mm-hmm. percent. Um, but I've noticed that with the right education, that doesn't happen. Uh, people aren't really, I guess, affected when they read something negative, um, you know, with the right education. So, you know, like, like I always tell my team and in my organization, I, I always say, look, make sure you educate the prospect well. Right. Because if you don't educate them well, guess what? They'll go to Amazon or they'll go to Google and they'll look for all the bad reviews. And that's, that's not going to be their fault. It's going to be your fault. Mm-hmm. And this is something that I always emphasize, okay? Educate well, educate well. Show them the documents. Show them the info. Be their friend. Put their needs first. Understand and have empathy. Hey, look, you know, I was skeptical. Most people are. That's okay. Skepticism is healthy. But educate them well. So with good education, John, I've noticed most people, a good 90 to 95%, won't be affected by a bad review. Yeah, no, I think that's a, I think that's a great point there. And it's a great point that uh, you, you talk to your team about doing this upfront and early, because I think that's when you, as you said, I mean, if you, if you build up the reservoir of information and education and trust uh, in the prospect, then they're more likely to, uh, you know, they're more likely to trust their own instincts as to be thrown by some random uh, review. Yep. So in the time that you've been running your, your business, what, what has surprised you most uh, before you started and you thought, oh, I'm going to start this, I'm going to get into this and everything. Um, what has surprised you? What, what didn't you anticipate? That being an entrepreneur is an emotional ride. That, that definitely, you know, because I've, I consider myself a very um, emotional person. And of course, you know, like I always try to use this as a strength, not, not as mm-hmm. a weakness. But as an entrepreneur, there's going to be rejection. There's going to be times where you think it's going to work out and it doesn't. Goals that you wanted to achieve and you don't achieve. Um, bad days and good days. So you have to realize that, th- that there's not good or bad days. There's just days. Right. And I really had to work on, again, going back to mindset. And hey, you know what? I have to develop discipline, something I thought I had and I didn't have. I thought I was consistent. I noticed once I became an entrepreneur, I was not consistent because now I had to hire myself. And that is another skill that most people have to learn, right? On how to hire yourself, how to manage your emotions. So definitely managing my emotions has definitely been my bigger surprise, but it's also been a blessing because it's helped me in other areas in life also. Yeah, that's a great answer. And thank you. It's a great insight. I love that bit about hiring yourself because yeah, it's like, it's like when you hire somebody, you don't really know how good they are till they're about six months into, into the job. Uh, I guess with a lot of people, if you go into business or become an entrepreneur yourself, um, that's, a great, that's a great comment about you need to get to know yourself because there's probably things that would surprise you. You may want to fire yourself after six months. Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And <laughs> you know, that's where you have to develop some skin and some attitude that, hey, you know what? Why am I doing this? Why did I become an entrepreneur in the first place? So once you go back to your original why, your purpose, then it's going to be easier to stay on the right. Yeah. So, and just asking on that, uh, as we wrap up here, what is, what is your why when things get really tough for you, when things aren't working out, when you're feeling, you know, cause that's the roller coaster ride that, you know, any business is going to be on. Um, what is the why that you go back to, to pick yourself back up? So as an entrepreneur, I, I've noticed that when I'm growing and I'm contributing is when I'm happiest. Mm -hmm. So if I'm growing in my mindset and if I'm going as a person and I'm also contributing, that's when I am hundred percent. If, if I'm not growing, but I'm contributing, I'm okay. And if I'm not contributing, I'm growing, I'm lacking something. So with that in mind, the goal for me to become an entrepreneur was always to have freedom uh, you know, freedom of time and also to have enough money to do whatever I wanted. And I mm-hmm. think going back to, you know, you know, to scarcity mindset, w- once you see money as it is, as a tool, you can do a lot of great things with it. And since I'm little, I always realized that money is a powerful tool in which you can do a lot of good things. with. It. You can bless others. You can help a lot of people. So freedom, having enough money to do whatever I wanted, but the contribution part has always been big in me. You know, the, the whole fact that I can dedicate time to my volunteer work, 
which is so important. The whole fact that I can help many others in business and in health. And, you know, just, just for example, John, two weeks ago, a client calls me and says, you know what, John, I just want to tell you, thank you. And I said, well, why? What, you know, what happened? She said, because before consuming this product, you know, I was like this and this and that. And since consuming this product, I went to a doctor and things are amazing. I just want to say, thank you. And those stories literally fill me up. They, they remind me of the purpose of my purpose. They remind me of how many people I have to help. So growing into the business is always so fun for me and as a person, but contributing not only in, in my business, but also with the money is the best thing. So freedom and contribution. Yeah, I love it. That's uh, that's great, Janko. Uh, this, this has been fantastic, a fantastic story, and, and congratulations on your success. Thank you, all of Janko's information is going to be below this video, all the links. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yes. So uh, it, if you want to find me, definitely go to uh, my Instagram. Uh, my, my account is this is Janko just like that. And you could definitely send me a DM. You know, I like talking, you know, to people personally. So, you know, don't, don't be scared. You know, if, if you just want to have a conversation, I would love to have a conversation with you. I'm also in LinkedIn, my full name, Giancarlo Torres. You also find me. And again, conversation. I love to have a um, conversation a little bit on myself, John. Well, you know, more than the entrepreneur part, you know, I love, love soccer. It's, it's one of my passions. I was actually, before this podcast, I was watching the game. <laughs> oh, you were watching um, the Champions, Champions I League? I was. I was. Do you like... I am, I'm, like well, I, I, I'm, I'm from Ireland originally, so I grew up on... Um, on oh, okay. On, yeah, so I do oh. follow it, yeah. Fantastic. Well, yeah, so, you know, big soccer fan, love some good wine, and love some good friends. That's, And, of course, business. You know, that's that's kind of Janko in general. Yeah, so, yeah, soccer, wine, and friends sounds like an excellent combination. <laughs> it is, it is, it really is. <laughs> yeah. All right, listen, thank you again, uh, Janko. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner, CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you.